Hello, Behind the Knife listeners. This is Patrick Georgioff. I'm a trauma surgery fellow at the University of Texas and Houston. And in light of the recent COVID-19 outbreak, uh, a number of our listeners have been requesting more resources related to critical care, uh, especially ventilator management. And so uh, this lecture uh, is designed to introduce uh, surgery residents specifically to uh, ventilators uh, and different uh, ventilator um, uh, modes and and setups. Now, ventilators are extremely challenging to learn how to manage. Uh, the, the bulk of critical care fellowship is really focused on ventil ventilator management, and there are a number of other great resources out there. And so this this lecture is by no means the be all end all. It's a quick uh, and and somewhat dirty review, and should hopefully just be another resource. They can help you um, gain a better appreciation and, and understanding of, of, of some of the basic uh, management on, on the vent. So let's get started. So first of all, uh, positive pressure uh, of ventilation is not physiologic. Uh, normally when we take a big deep breath in, our chest wall expands, our diaphragm um, contracts, and that generates negative pressure within the chest and air is drawn in. Uh, that's the exact opposite for positive pressure ventilation. And that can result in a number of, of bad things. And that can include uh, lung injury, uh, diaphragm atrophy, reduced cardiac output, dyssynchrony on the vent, and of course things like pneumonia, ventilator-associated pneumonia. And when it comes to understanding the different modes on the ventilator, it is super confusing, and it's like alphabet soup out there. Uh, this is a list of acronyms from one of the major vent manufacturers' manuals. And as you can see, there are countless different uh, settings. And it's really very, very confusing, and I, actually it's not very helpful. And this uh, graphic here, I think, more accurately represents what you need to actually know or how you might want to think about different ventilator modes. Ventilator modes really come in three big shapes. The first are, are really in, in kind of three buckets. The first being volume controlled, pressure controlled, and spontaneous. That's really your first job and the first thing you need to absolutely understand when um, managing a patient on the ventilator is, is this patient on a volume or pressure or spontaneous mode? That's the first step to understanding um, all the things that, fo uh, that, that follow. And as you can see here, the most the, these modes here are by far and away the most common modes. And so if you understand these modes, or at least everything except maybe by level or APRV, you really understand 95 plus percent of the ventilator, ventilator uh, later management that's occurring in an ICU. And so we're going to break each of these down and talk about how you um, think about uh, these modes. But first, let's talk about the difference between volume and pressure control, because that's a critical uh, difference when it comes to vent, uh, understanding the management of a vent. So for volume control, the biggest difference is you're setting a tidal volume. You're setting an actual volume. Uh, and in turn, you're going to monitor the pressure that results from that volume that you set. So we're going to set a tidal volume. Um, this is the volume of air that's delivered with each breath. And in general, we want that to be around 6 or up to 8 cc's per kg of ideal body weight. And ideal body weight is determined by the patient's sex and height. It's easy to look up online. There are a number of different charts and graphs that you can use to make that determination. Restore rate is, of course, the number of breaths per minute. Typical numbers are about 12 to 20 breaths per minute. FiO2 is oxygen concentration, usually ranging from 35 or 40% up to obviously 100%. PEEP is positive end expiratory pressure. This is a constant pressure that's applied throughout the breast cycle, including expiration. And physiologic PEEP is thought to be around 5 centimeters of water. Um, and you'll see uh, in perhaps ARDS patients uh, or patients with lungs that are 
uh, or people patients that are hypo hypoxic with lungs that have poor compliance, you may increase the PEEP up to 15 or 20 centimeters of water. And then finally, pressure support. So pressure support uh, is, uh, refers to the pressure given to support any extra or spontaneous breaths. And this is going to come in uh, to play when we talk about SIMV. And this is typically set at around 5 to 12 centimeters of water. As I mentioned, if you're setting the volume primarily, then you need to monitor the pressures that gen are generated on the ventilator. And so we were interested in a number of things, including the peak inspiratory pressure, which is the maximum pressure during inspiration. So this is the maximum pressure that occurs while air is being blasted through that endotracheal tube and into the lungs. In general, we want this less than 40 centimeters of water. Another very important type of uh, pressure is the plateau pressure. Uh, this is the pressure in the alveoli that's measured during an inspiratory hold. So there's no airflow going on. This, this really tells you what the compliance of the lungs and the chest wall are. And uh, we know from the ARDS-NET, ARDS-NET um, studies that we want to aim for a plateau pressure that's less than 30 centimeters of water. Uh, and that this can actually um, uh, be beneficial to a patient's mortality on the ventilator. One of the very, very, very few things uh, that you can um, do on a ventilator that has an effect on mortality. And then certainly we're worried about the minute ventilation. Minute ventilation is defined by the tidal volume times the respiratory rate. And in general, uh, we're talking around 5 to 10 liters per minute. And you can see here in this graphic the PIP, or the peak inspiratory pressure, that uh, is designated here. This is for a volume control type um, pressure scalar, which we'll come back to in a minute what that means. But peak inspiratory pressure here, and plateau pressure here, again, this is during an inspiratory hold where there's no airflow. So let's compare this to pressure control settings. So a lot of this is the same, except in pressure control, you're setting an inspiratory pressure, and then you're monitoring what tidal volumes are generated. Okay, so that's complete opposite of volume control. In volume control, you're setting the volume, and you monitor to see what kind of pressures are generated. In pressure control, you set the pressure, and you monitor to see what kind of tidal volumes are generated. In general, in story pressure is roughly less than 25 centimeters of water. And these are already uh, different uh, settings that we've gone through in the prior slide. And based on that pressure, you're going to generate a certain tidal volume. And based on that tidal volume times respiratory rate, a certain minute ventilation. These are those uh, things called scalars that I was talking about. These are uh, different um, properties like pressure, flow, or volume graphed against time. And they're very classic appearing um, of patterns uh, when you look at volume modes versus pressure modes. The most easily recognizable is the pressure scalar, where you see this peaked type um, tracing for volume modes versus a square type tracing for pressure modes. So again, I think if you can understand that there are three main types of ventilator modes, volume versus pressure controlled versus spontaneous, you really uh, have made a giant leap forward in terms of understanding how ventilators work. This is absolutely core stuff. And again, if you can understand volume control AC and SIMV, pressure controlled AC, SIMV, and spontaneous pressure support modes, that's 95 plus, plus percent of what we're talking about. But let's look at this graph in a different way, um, and or not this graph, but this flow chart in a different way um, that might help us better understand the specifics of each of these settings. So this takes those key modes we talked about, assist control, SIMV, pressure support, and APRV, and talks about the different settings you can have within each of those modes, what you set, and it shows a pressure scalar that helps us understand what's actually happening with the patient. So let's go through each one of these individually. So the first is assist control. So assist control, as we saw in the prior flow chart, can be either a volume control or pressure control setting. For volume control, you're going to set the tidal volume, respiratory rate, PEEP, and FiO2. 
note there's no pressure support setting. And that's because the defining feature of assist control ventilation is that every single breath the patient gets is the exact same. It has the exact same amount of support. Every tracing is going to look the same. So at the minimum, the patient gets whatever respiratory rate you set. And if they're breathing spontaneously or over that respiratory rate, any extra breaths generated are going to receive the exact same amount of support. The only difference being the volume versus pressure control setting. And again, in volume control setting, you have a tidal volume that you set and you monitor to see what the resulting pressures are. And in pressure control, you have a pressure that you set, an inspiratory pressure, and you monitor to see what kind of tidal volumes are generated. So again, key feature of assist control is that every single breath is the same, okay? Whether it's generated by the patient or whether it's generated by the ventilator, they all look the exact same. This is in contrast to SIMV, or Synchronized Intermittent Mandatory Ventilation. SIMV can also be set in volume or pressure control settings. The difference is there's two types of breaths that can be delivered with SIMV. This includes a pressure supported breath. And this can get kind of confusing, especially when we're talking about a volume control SIMV setting that has an additional pressure supported breath. That gets a little hairy. So for SIMV, let's look at volume control first. You're going to set the tidal volume, the respiratory rate, the PEEP, the FIL2, and that pressure support breath. Again, based on what we've already talked about, the pressure support Refer, pressure support refers to the amount of pressure that you're giving the patient for any spontaneous or extra breaths that are taken. Compared to pressure control SIMV setting, you set the inspiratory pressure, respiratory rate, PEEP, FIO2, and again the pressure support setting. So for any breaths that the patient generates, beyond their respiratory rate, they actually get this other kind of breath, which is the pressure support breath. And it actually looks different. So here, this patient's receiving a volume controlled breath. Maybe you set the tidal volume at 500, they get 500 cc's delivered here. If they're breathing faster than their preset respiratory rate, they're going to receive a different kind of extra breath, and that extra breath is going to be pressure support. Again, pressure supported breaths are typically set between around 5 and 12 centimeters of water. Now, the thought was originally when SIMV was developed was that this is going to be a weaning mode of ventilation, and that by having the patient have these only minimally supported breaths instead of the fully supported breaths like we saw in the assist control setting, the patient's gonna to have to do a little bit more work. And this is gonna force them to come off of the ventilator. It's gonna make their lungs stronger, it's gonna make their diaphragms work, and it's gonna allow them to wean. Now that actually didn't play out. SIMV is not a proven uh, a superior ventilator mode for weaning, uh, but it is a mode that is used uh, very, very frequently. Um, and it may have some benefits when it comes to patient comfort. So again, the difference going back between assist control and SIV is that every single assist control breath looks the exact same, whether it's generated by the ventilator or the patient, compared to SIMV, in which only some of the breaths are fully supported, while others may have a lower pressure support setting. Again, any extra or spontaneous breaths developed or uh, generated by the patient get supported with pressure support, not the full volume or pressure that you have set. Let's move on to pressure support. So pressure support is pretty simple. Pressure support, you set the inspiratory pressure, the PEEP, and the FIO2. And note, there's no rate that you set. This is a purely spontaneous mode. So every breath generated here is actually initiated by the patient. Now breaths can be initiated on ventilators uh, in one of two ways. It just depends on which ventilator you're using. 
That is, the patient generates a certain negative inspiratory force that triggers the vent, or they move a certain amount of volume within that closed circuit that triggers the vent. So the pressure support, completely spontaneous. You're simply giving an inspiratory pressure, maintaining a PEEP, and giving an FiO2, and this patient's determining the rate. Now, I want to uh, share a quick note on reporting pressure settings, because this can actually be confusing because some of the ventilators report this differently. So inspiratory pressures may be reported as the total pressure or could actually be reported as the delta. Now, what do I mean by that? So if actual pressure, if the actual pressure is being delivered to the patient is 20 centimeters of water of inspiratory pressure and five centimeters of water of PEEP, this could be reported as 20 over five, that would be a total pressure, or the delta as 15 over five. So different ventilators uh, may report this differently. And so it's good to know what those how those ventilators are set up and to be careful how you report these settings. Moving on to a significantly more confusing area, which is airway pressure release ventilation. So airway pressure release ventilation is used uh, as an open lung type concept of ventilation that's designed to give maximal pressure to the lungs for the maximal time to keep those lungs stented open. This typically helps with oxygenation in wet, non-compliant, inflamed lungs, typically in the setting of ARDS. So for APRV, you set a high pressure, which is usually in the range of 20 or 25 to 30 centimeters of water, a low pressure, typically zero centimeters of water, and we'll come back to how that can be in a moment, a time low, usually 0 0.2 to 0 0.8 seconds, usually closer to around 0.6 though, and a time high versus a respiratory rate. Now, as you can see on this graph, the patient spends most of their time in an inspiratory type phase. So this is completely opposite of the norm. Okay, their lungs are being stented open and only every now and then do they have this blip where they have a period of uh, expiration and they're allowed to ventilate. So airway pressure release ventilation can also be thought of as simply an inverse ratio of a bi-level setting. Okay. Now, bi-level is a supremely confusing term uh, that can also be a brand name uh, as well uh, that we're not going to get into in too much detail right now because I don't think it serves this lecture too well. But know that you may walk up to a ventilator and it may say bi-level on it. Well, someone just told you that patient's actually on APRV. What does that mean? It just means that that ventilator is set up in a bi-level setting, which has a high pressure and a low pressure, a time high and a time low, and that the ratio of inspiration to expiration is actually inverted. So again, we have a long period of high pressure and a very short period of low pressure. Normally, an IDE is around 1 to 2. and APRV, our IDEs are switched and exaggerated, usually around seven to one. So this definitely favors oxygenation, again using a quote open lung concept, and it definitely does not favor ventilation. So hypercapnia is certainly an issue. It's also important to note that the patient can breathe on their own at any time. So even though they have these long periods of inspiration, we don't typically think of being able to breathe while you're being delivered an inspiratory breath. Patients on APRV actually can. They do not, however, get any extra pressure support when they do. This is thought to allow the patient to be more comfortable in this inverted setting where their lungs are constantly propped open with high pressures. So how do we set APRV? This is pretty confusing uh, and is definitely best approached um, in person with someone with a lot of experience with APRV.
Um, this requires a fair amount of practice, uh, but here are a few uh, key tips. You have to set the P high, the pressure high. You want to typically use your desired plateau pressure, and that is oftentimes in someone who's sick enough to be moved to APRV settings around 25 or 30 centimeters of water. You're also going to set the P low. Say our default can be zero centimeters of water. Again, how can that be? We know that if we uh, totally de-recruit a patient's lungs and let that stented lung collapse into it itself, that that actually is injurious to the lung and can uh, make oxygenation worse. But even though we have the P low set at zero, we're actually going to generate auto PEEP by setting our T low sufficiently short. So our time low is going to be very short. It's going to be so short that we're going to not let expiration go on its entirety. We're going to trap some air and create auto PEEP. So the time low is typically set between Again, 0 0.2, which is much more extreme than 0 0.8 seconds. Typically, you uh, arrive at a time low of around 0 0.5 to 0 0.7 or so. And what you want to do is observe the expiratory flow graph it to target an expiratory flow cutoff of around 50 to 75% of peak expiratory flow. This is visualized here. So this is 100%, 75, and 50% of peak expiratory flow. We typically cut off expiration around 50 to 75% to generate auto peep. To assess for auto peep, we, do, we perform an expiratory hold and we'll adjust that time low to achieve our desired amount of auto peep. We also have to jive this with the total tidal volumes. Ideally, we stay around 6 cc's per kg of predicted body weight. Um, and we can, again, adjust that time low to find a happy medium between tidal volumes and auto peep. And setting the respiratory rate versus the time high, um, they both affect each other, clearly, uh, and that depends on what type of ventilator you're using, so we're not going to dive into that too much. All right, so APRV, pretty confusing, but these other modes really aren't. And so again, I encourage everyone who's listening to this lecture uh, to really think about this graphic and understanding how each of these modes fall within the volume, pressure, and spontaneous settings. Doing so will, again, put you light years ahead of, of where you might be now um, if this is a concept that you have not yet understood. And if you walk away from this lecture knowing uh, where um, assist control and SIMV settings uh, uh, sit within these different volume control or pressure control parameters, then uh, you know, you've learned a very important topic. So I hope uh, that you learned something today. Uh, again, ventilators are extraordinarily challenging and takes an awful lot of time and practice to uh, even begin uh, to master. Uh, and so I do hope this brief uh, and very simple introduction was helpful uh, and, um, you know, uh, uh, I'm wishing everyone uh, to stay safe out there during this, uh, this epidemic uh, and um, hopefully we can use our skills to uh, help some folks.